Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live. It's a bonus tech edition. We're here tonight with Jason Glasby and Scott Caviton. And we've got Dr. Normal, too, but he doesn't have a microphone, so I think, you know, we'll be fine without him. You can heckle. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk first about Portland Incubator Experiment. Yes. And then about urban airship, but I want you to start off by telling us, I'm just calling it PI, are we supposed to call it PIE? What are we supposed to call it? And then, what the hell is it? I think we're figuring out what to call it, too. Uh, at the moment, it's PI. If, PI. Uh, it's basically just, um, uh, let's try something new and figure out what happens if we get a bunch of people in a space that we've all been working with already. Mm-hmm. Um, well, do you want to start? Kind of yeah, have the, actually, well, so the name Pi uh, actually is, has its roots in at Wyden and Kennedy. We're in the building that Wyden and Kennedy owns. This is a, about a four thousand square foot space um, that we've come together with them on for this collaboration. And, and they actually have a long history of Pi, mm-hmm. like literally of Pi. Dan Wyden's a huge like Pi, pie fresh, fan. like the pastry, you know, berry Pi fan. And uh, so they floated the name for him. We're like, oh, okay. You're so that's going to give us keys to this place. That was yeah. one of my questions: was yeah. did you guys come up with something that would spell out pi? I mean, pi. So pi was what you started with. Yeah, yeah. It was we, we started with pi, and then and then uh, Rennie actually Rennie Gleason's the uh, uh, global interactive director. Thank you, thank you, the global interactive director, and and the brainchild one of the one of the folks. There's you know sort of four of us who've come come together to to make this space a reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, for a good six or eight months, uh, myself, uh, Jason, Rick Tarosi had all been talking about doing a space like this. And the goal is to bring together a bunch of folks in the community who, who do really great projects um, and that want to do more stuff together uh, and want to work together. Right. I, I love the time, you know, I, I would, uh, when we were doing the bacon stuff, when Jason and I did the bacon stuff, we still spend, are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a big old bacon poster. There's a huge, yeah, we're moving there. bacon in here as well. Bacon will also be a member this of is the company. This is the home of bacon. This is the home of bacon. <laughs> in the pearl. Bacon pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would eat some bacon pie if you had some on hand. Just yeah, so maybe cornmeal, crispy on top. Yeah. Let's get back to that. <laughs> I haven't eaten dinner yet. All right, so. Uh... Yeah, where was that? We were at... Uh, uh, so we've been working on trying to figure out how to do the space. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're working on how to do the space, and we'd gotten a list of probably you know, 10 or 12 people together that, that all wanted to really just you know, do something together. And, and it, we knew that whatever we were going to do was going to be ad hoc. We knew that uh, when we go to create the, the things inside of this you know, co-working space, we'd spin up a C-Corp. It'd be a real company. Mm-hmm. Um, there'd be rules and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there'd be sort of a, a collaborative effort around the thing, and and it's you know loosely modeled after you know what we're seeing with BetaWorks in New York or TechStars in uh, Denver and Boulder, mm-hmm. uh, or even Y Combinator to a certain extent. Um, and it's the idea of folks who've actually done things before, who are entrepreneurial and want to build things uh, in small groups and launch them quickly. You know, there's sort of two rules for the ventures that we'll um, that we'll do in here, and and one is uh, it has to have a business model. And the second one is we have to be able to launch it in 30 days. So A business model and be able to launch it in 30 days. And you've got some experience with that because bacon was launched how quickly? 21 days. 21 days to tasty goodness. Yeah. Which definitely was like part of the model. We figured, you know, if you get people to know what they're doing with a very strong like goal and with just so much off-the-shelf tools with, you know, frameworks in place now, you know, Django or Ruby uh, or Rails, I guess, um, you know, it just doesn't take a long time. And there are projects that are huge and deserve a long time, but we thought, you know, if we had these amazing people who are working on things already, you know, sometimes the smallest conversation spins out a what if, and a weekend later a guy comes back with, I have a, I have a working prototype, you know, and yeah. these are the types of things that we get excited about working on, and, you know, we're doing most of it in the evenings and the weekends, and we're like, you know, we're all separated, we're all, all these people are spread around town. Um, what happens if we actually had one space where we're all in where one person's conversation could be another person's idea one person's idea gets improved because the right people are in the right room who know someone or you know just brainstorming out loud sometimes which is you know we've been here just over two weeks and it's already happened like four times how many people are currently working in this space i think it's 10 right now yeah yeah it's 10 
yeah. So, I mean, you don't, when you come in here, I mean, are people generally here every day? I mean, how much of a come and go? It's, it's definitely a lot, of come, a lot of come and go. We've got people who are, who travel and things like that, but we, we make Thursdays the day that we, we encourage everybody to be here, mm -hmm. um, Thursday afternoon. It's like a hippie commune, though. I mean, Thursday, we really encourage you to show up and, <laughs> and be a part of all the love and share your information. I wasn't calling oh, you hippies, like, I was just... totally nailed it. It really, I mean, that's it what really it sounded is, like. It really is, it really is. Well, and, and, and that's kind of, uh, and on Thursday afternoons, we do a Thursday dinner. Uh, and it's not really a dinner, it's more of a chance for us to, you know, drink a beer. But more importantly, everybody kind of goes around the table and shares what they're up to, what they did this week, what they're going to be doing next week, um, and maybe challenges that they're having. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually been really great because folks, I mean, you get an idea of who's doing what, but more importantly, you... you you have sort of this group think that can like tackle a problem in two minutes mm -hmm. um, and give you a bunch of great ideas on things that you can do to move forward. As well as a little bit of accountability. <clears throat> you know, like Michael Richardson's one of the guys here and um, you know, on Wednesday he was busting ass to finish something because he's like, I don't I didn't want to show up to you know, the Thursday meeting and be like, yeah. yeah, I told you I'd get some stuff done over the week and then I just kinda screwed around to watch Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> he's like, No, like I got something done. Like it's the project I'm working on and I'm moving forward with it. And there's that if he talks about it in the space, people kind of know like it's, it should be coming along, and there's an incentive to like want so, to show people what he's, he's accomplished. It's like an entrepreneurial support group. Yeah, I would definitely when, say we all have a problem. Space? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple problems. Multiple problems. Yeah, so one of which is the space. Is has anything? I mean, two weeks. Has anything come out of it already that you guys can talk about? Because some some. Projects that were already underway are here. Yes. Yeah. There's, so there's a couple projects. Bacon's here. Mm -hmm. uh, Urban Airships here. Uh, Rick has a couple projects he's bringing in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then we've probably got uh, two or three other projects that we've already um, specced and have pitched uh, with Widen um, to a couple of their clients, and we're just kind of waiting for feedback on those. Um, and again, they're you know I, I can't talk about any of them yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, very interesting technology related uh, short uh, you know can get them to market very quickly have great business models um, and just you know all kinds of different stuff and it's, it's, it's great for you know this, this group of folks that we brought together we all have really short attention spans mm -hmm. and so this kind of stuff is just perfect for us um, and you know we're, just, we're dedicated to these projects and we'll see them through but um, very 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 fun stuff and, and it's been great to get to work with Wyden because they have a bunch of fantastic clients um, and they're looking for new ways to meet the needs of those clients that are a little bit outside of what they traditionally do mm -hmm. and it's not that like we're you know we're changing the model or we're doing anything we're, we're just doing some different stuff mm -hmm. and uh, and then <clears throat> hopefully building businesses around those what might be a campaign or might be uh, some project for uh, uh, one of their clients could potentially be a business yeah. and a lot should be stuff for what wine's doing I'm, I mean they they built out the space you know they there was a lot of things that are here now that weren't here. It was just an open, empty room. Mm -hmm. And they've invested a lot to create an atmosphere for us. And they're not charging us. I mean, I don't know how much I need to go into the business, but like, they're, there really is like a small altruistic thing they're doing with the tech community. Um, but you know, realistically also, there's definitely some good business that can come out of it. Yeah. It's there's definitely a potential upside for yeah. them. There's a it, potential upside for everybody. It doesn't take away from the, I mean, they have some phenomenal developers in-house already. So in no way are we meant to like, you know, reproduce that or downplay what they have. But um, one of the things that they don't really have maybe the opportunity to create is just, you know, that think tank that doesn't have any alliances and can just come up. So we get to do that, and if in the process we can help one of their clients, um, all the better for everyone. And it looks like there's a couple things that you know, like literally came out of silly ideas that you know Rick heard, you know, a couple people talking, threw a wonderful spin on it, and suddenly it's in, it's in a pitch. So where do you guys see the space being in, you, in a year? You've got ten people now. Um, I mean, if someone gets set on a project that they're then moving on to full time, may they? Pull away. Might you guys bring some more people in? What are the criteria for that? Yeah, the the criteria is uh, you can spin out, uh, and and the goal is that you spin out because you've grown too big. Mm -hmm. No one company can take more than thirty five percent of space. Yeah. Uh, and so um, if you you know if you start to add up people, then you have to spin out. Uh, that, that's a win. We call that sort of a graduation, right? So 
um, and, and you still have a tie, you're sort of, an, you're an alumni of the space. Uh, and you, <coughs> you also, um, you know, you have an equity stake in, an equity stake and also a vested interest in the success of the, organi- of the, of the whole thing as mm-hmm. ongoing, so that's great. And so what we do there is, hey great, you know, three or four slots would open up and then uh, the, the folks would come together and say, hey, how about this person, this person, this person, and then, and then we'd invite them in to, to join. So. so it's kind of a rule by committee. Yeah, it's definitely ruled by committee. We we uh, we everyone work, has a voice for sure. Everyone has a voice for sure, um, and uh, you know Jason, Rick, and I have kind of led the way from from the sort of our side of it, and then we've been working with Rennie, mm-hmm. and so it's been the four of us who've really driven a lot of the sort of details and the day to day stuff, um, and uh, yeah. yeah. So, is there anything else about the space or about where it's heading? Um, I mean, I think the goal is that we'll do some. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone involved will have really, really positive associations and friendships and connections we made that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. And hopefully, the trajectory we're on will be accelerated by the work of other people. Uh, I mean, having people like Rail in here will be phenomenal because he's been through so much, and Diane and Jason, you know, with Placial have done things that mm-hmm. a lot of us haven't. So, you know, just the access to advice in a lot of ways will hopefully, you know, increase the trajectory. Um, yeah, Diane took an hour to help us with the, the Urban Airship investment deck, and it was like the best hour I could have spent, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So it's just those kinds of things where you wouldn't get that otherwise, right? So our goal is to, you know, to make several people much more successful than they would have been otherwise. And hopefully that's us. Hopefully it's <laughs> everyone in the room. Okay. Um, and then get more people in and you know it's also not for everyone it's not going to be permanent for a lot of people i don't think you know there's some people who are kind of renting a desk and kind of getting a feel for what it is and it might not be their thing and you know that's great but our goal is to have really excited people doing really exciting work and and then seeing something happen with it versus just talking about it so one of the projects that we have in here is urban airship when I think of urban airship, I ever seen the movie Baron von Munchausen, The Adventures of Baron von oh, Munchausen? It's, it's, a it's a Terry Gilliam movie, and uh, Baron von Munchausen. Anyway, hot air balloon <laughs> made out of bloomers, and for Got some it. reason, I always think of it sailing over the city, and I always think of that as an urban airship. So why don't you tell us what urban airship is, what it's doing? Sure. Uh, so, so the the you know the kind of sort of I don't want to say the lame, but the 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 pitches that we help. Uh, mobile developers uh, lower their costs um, and increase their you know ROI on their their investments that they make in their mobile applications. We do that with backend infrastructure. Um, the team, the Urban Airship team, is four people. We all worked at uh, Vidu. Mm-hmm. Um, it's myself and then and then three other engineers, and and we all worked together and had done uh, basically you know backend web services infrastructure um, and. When we, you know, when we left Vidoop, we all just kind of said, well, what do we want to do next? And uh, Stephen Osborne, who's our CTO, uh, was one of the folks who moved out from Tulsa, um, said, well, I have this idea, um, and I, you know, I'm pretty far along with it. Um, do you guys want to do this? Because I don't know how to do the business side. And I said, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm in. Let's do it. Let's make a business. And then we are like, oh, we have to come up with a name. And uh, M.T. Richardson was like, Urban Airship. <laughs> <laughs> he just had that one in his back pocket. You know, he well. really did. He had, it, he had it written out. He was ready to just drop it on the He's pit. the happiest man in the world that, um, that the company's named after an airship. He's a huge airship nut. He like mm-hmm. he was down at bar camp in Austin and did a, uh, a talk on airships. He did, like, and he had his slides already. I'm like, who, who brings slides <laughs> to bar camp? <laughs> I'm talking about it sometimes. Yeah, yes. seriously. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we, we launched uh, on the 17th of June. Uh, the Worldwide Developer Conference in uh, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it was a great day to launch because we had about, you know, I don't know, 3,000 developers lined up in line to go in to see, you know, the you know the Messiah or whatever, you know, who, who talk about all the great stuff. It wasn't Steve wasn't there, but um, so we bought breakfast um, for everybody in line, and it was just a great way to sort of spread the word. And that just we we got a lot of buzz from that um, off the bat, and we were able to to lock in two just fantastic customers. Um, Tapulus and Subatomic. Uh, Tapulus makes the 
uh, most popular iPhone game out there, Tap Tap Revenge, mm -hmm. and uh, Subatomic makes uh, Field Runners, which is a tower defense Second game. most popular Second game. Second most popular <laughs> game. It's a great game. And uh, we've, uh, we're just, we're, we're going, it's going really well. We've got a lot of customers. Uh, and we've just about to go live with our uh, second product, the in-app purchase, which is going to be really, really interesting. In-app purchase? Yeah, it gives you the ability to be inside of an iPhone app and mm -hmm. maybe buy some more content. So in the, in the case of a game, you might want to download a new map pack um, or weapons or badges, um, and you'd want to buy those for 99 cents. Um, <clears throat> the other one is you know, just being able to, to get, um, there was a, somebody who called us today who's going to be doing sheet music. Um, and you can, you know, you buy the app for $1.99 and then you can buy more sheet music for 99 cents. Uh, and it's rock and roll classical uh, sheet music. Um, and I was like, wow, that doesn't seem like a big market. He's like, he's like it's a pretty big market. And I was like, oh, okay. No, 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 no. Hey, you're not a musician, <laughs> are you? No, I'm not. I'm not, right. I, and when <laughs> someone says, um, it's a pretty big market, that means I'm not going to tell you how big it is, but it's just fine for me. <laughs> yeah. Don't overcharge me, please. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that what you're doing then doesn't really have an impact on the end user, but that completely reverses that. I mean, that really does. It makes it easier for you. Because I was thinking um, there's the Kindle reader for the iPhone, mm -hmm. and you go and buy everything separately. You don't buy anything in the Kindle application. Is That's that right? right? Mm -hmm. I don't use it, so I'm just spitballing here. Um, and you're doing great. Dr. Yeah. Constant state he, he of laughter. You said he could. I did say he could heckle, but you know, apparently I'm supposed to move along now and not mock him back for mocking me. So it, it really does have a significant impact on the usability for the end user as well as for the production value. For, for the, and for the app developer, for yeah. sure. And it also, you know, a lot, a lot of folks, when you look at the, the graphs on usage of iPhone apps, it's, you know, there's a big flurry during the, the initial sort of you download it, you use it a lot, mm -hmm. but then it really trails off. And the, and the goal is to keep the users engage with the app and more importantly take advantage of that that range of anywhere from you know three to ten percent of users who are diehard users mm -hmm. that you could potentially get a recurring revenue stream from so instead of just a dollar ninety nine once and they go away it's a dollar ninety nine and then ninety nine cents every six months from them right and <clears throat> so it, it's it's definitely very interesting that's that's the one that's one product the other one is uh, push notifications and push notifications are um, it's like free SMS mm -hmm. um, so imagine if you have an app um, for example, we're doing, uh, let's see here, what's a good example? Well, Tap Tap Revenge is a great one, right? So I can challenge somebody, like my friends, to a game. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just won a game, and I'll say, challenge your friends, you click the challenge. And then it lists your friends, and you click, yeah, I send them a challenge. And then it's from the phone, it basically sends out a notification to all your friends, that then pop up on their phone and say, hey, you know, I just played Tap Tap Revenge, I got the score, do you want to challenge me? Or do you want to accept my challenge? You click yes, you play, and then it responds back. So um, it, it sounds it sounds strange, or it sounds like really simple. It's like push notifications, but what's really interesting that we found is a lot of big companies are trying to offset SMS costs. Mm -hmm. um, SMS is a hundred and thirty billion dollar market, hundred and thirty billion dollar market, and it's because the big carriers can charge, you know, somebody for sending the message. They can charge somebody else can charge money for you know transit, and then another person and then you have to charge to accept the message. It's yeah. the highest, uh, uh, most expensive data transfer. So this there thing is. would come in under the radar of the exactly. phone company. It's data. So it's all it just data. Falls into the yeah, data so it's for people who already have smartphones and have a data plan. This rides across the data plan, so you're not paying anything more for it. So it's like the it's just to like you. the push email. Yeah. It's just like Except the push email service. Yeah, that yeah, pings exactly. you every time it comes up. Mm -hmm. Right, but this this you don't even have to have your app open. It can it can like oh, pop I a little dialog box. Oh, I don't have I have the mine just pings me whenever an email comes in. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. It's yeah. exactly like that. So it can you know show a little dialog box. It can uh, um, do a uh, update a number on the, the on the app the badge what they call that. It also play a sound. Um, <laughs> well, I can't say what it is, but we have a great amazing customer. Who's coming online? Who's going to play a sound every time some new content comes in? And it's, it's, it's funny. So but what is it? It's a what push? Uh, push notification. Push notification. Yeah. And is it done? You guys have this set up. It's ready. We've to go. shipped it. Uh, we've got about a hundred and hundred and fifty customers right now on it, and uh, it's 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 you know it's going all right. Sounds like so. You started this June sixteenth. You said June seventeenth. June yeah. Uh, yeah. off by one day. Sorry. Right. So in the last couple months. It's gone from zero to 
Yeah, it's gone from zero to a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, we definitely are, are uh, you know, <laughs> it's, we think there's something even bigger and more interesting here. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sure exactly what it is and we're kind of finding our way, but uh, it, it continues to go well. We, we get a lot of interest from folks. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the big thing that we're just kind of waiting on right now is making sure that um, people actually want to, uh, the people actually implement it and get it done into their apps, right? So. So yeah, we have a lot of people who've um, who've signed up for accounts, and uh, we're waiting for them to get their apps accepted in the app store, basically. Yeah. Um, but it's not just for the iPhone. This has got use with all. Yeah. So we're, we're today we're focused on the iPhone, 100% um, on the iPhone right now. Mm -hmm. But um, we we think there's some really interesting things when you start talking cross platform. So. Uh, when you think about the Android devices, uh, all the Symbian devices, which would be a lot of Nokia devices, uh, LG, Samsung's, um, <coughs> Blackberry, obviously the Pre from Palm, all of those are very interested in or already have their own push infrastructure mm -hmm. that we can just sort of provide a layer that allows people to just communicate with us and then we communicate to the devices all over on anyone. So right now you're focusing on iPhone because obviously there's a huge push for iPhone. People love their iPhone, but then people are also starting to get very upset about the maintenance of the App Store and about the allowances of the App Store and what, you know, people getting rejected for whatever reason. And then we've got Android, the Palm Pre, and the Blackberry. People who love their Blackberry still love their Blackberries. I'm an iPhone user. I have no issue with my iPhone except for I do sometimes question why apps are rejected. But do you see there being a, a lightning in the iPhone craze? Uh, no, I actually I think I think it's a uh, you know this is this is a the iPhone is shaking up the market completely. Mm -hmm. um, for years, it was always the carriers. The carriers were in charge of everything, and the carriers would dictate. Okay, handset manufacturer, would you like to sell the device? Okay, great. Here's what's going to be on the device, and here's one, and here's how much we're going to get, and that's how it's going to be, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's how it was. But now what's happened is with the iPhone, you have a really great device that is just driving a boatload of consumer demand, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the other one is now the platform's open, and it's a lot more open. I mean, if, you've, if you look at um, some of the, the old app stores, or not even app stores, but like you know, when you wanted to get a, an app on, say, like a Verizon phone, you know, five years ago or whatever, it was like fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars, right? And even then, you had to wait, you know, two years to make it happen, and then, and then get it out, right? <clears throat> and then, oh my God, how am I going to monetize it? Right? Yeah. Now, Apple comes along with this model that works great, and it works great because they own the whole chain, they own the device, the OS, and everything, and, and they can do it. And sure, they reject, you know, four percent of the the apps that are in it's there. It's only four percent. Yeah, it's only four percent. But they get a lot of press on that. Yeah, they yeah. do. Uh, sure, they, they may reject some of those, <clears throat> but what's happening is all the, you know, the iPhone is really only 65 million devices. And when you look at a company like Nokia that ships a million devices a day, mm -hmm. there, there are significantly larger markets out there, but the smartphone, the, the smartphone that's driven by data um, is here to stay. And it's only a market that's gonna be just massive. There's 3.3 billion uh, mobile phones out there, 1.7 billion uh, uh, smartphones. Um, that's only going to, I mean, it's going to get closer and closer to that 3.3 billion. So uh, we don't, I, I don't see the iPhone trending down or, I mean, you know, maybe it'll trend down, but it doesn't matter because Nokia, Blackberry, Palm, uh, Android, all of those devices are now shifting. They're building their own app stores. They want to do push notifications. They want to do in-app purchase. So you um, think they're <coughs> shifting so that their model is more like the iPhone? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Nokia already has their own store. They have an OV store, which is modeled almost exactly after the iPhone store. Blackberry, uh, Blackberry has their own app store. Um, Palm Cree is working on Android, already has one as well. Um, and they're not as publicized yet because they haven't been on as long. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for the Android, there's only been two devices. By the end of the, by the, end of the year, there'll be something like 22 devices. So, the, I mean, <clears throat> we're about to see some really interesting things happen with mobile. Um, Another thing with iPhone, though. Well, in the states, because as we've we've talked to, I think Griggs, mobile everywhere else in the world, especially in in the less populated, or not less populated, but um, less urbanized countries, has always been gangbusters. It's just recently that the United States is starting to catch up. 
Yeah, and, and it's always been problems with the carriers as well, right? Because the carriers always want to duke it out, and nobody wants to play nice and everything. But the the in Europe and Asia, they all um, made it so that the it was very easy to deploy a phone on any network, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have that here. Now, that, I think that's going to start to change because you're going to have people who want a specific device, and the carrier is just going to say, look, I don't care what device you have, just be on our network and pay. Yeah. Right? No more jailbreaking. People will just... Right. That'll be nice. So, did Urban Airship come to Pi just because it was something that you were working on? Uh, no, I mean we, we definitely thought about it, um, but it, you know there's there's a couple things in terms of being able to work with uh, some of the potentially some of the widened clients mm -hmm. were you know kind of interested in that. Um, the other one was you know yeah we we're coming in here, but we we knew that as a small company uh, we're very strong on the engineering side. And we were going to need help in other places, whether it's, you know, marketing or investor relations or whatever. And the folks that were coming together here um, have helped significantly with that. Uh, because we, you know, we kind of know what we don't know. Um, we know we're not good at those things, so we're not, you know, even going to do that. When, when we thought about going into mobile, you know, we all just kind of looked at each other and go, God, we can't do mobile. We don't know anything about UI. <laughs> and then we're like, well, God, we're good at back end stuff. And then sure enough, you know, the, the opportunity you know, revealed itself, so, yeah. All right, so I want to move back to Pi for just a moment. Sure. What, do you guys have any plans? You had an open house last week. Mm hmm Do you have any other future plans for the space, to open the space up to the community more than just the people that are actively using it? Well, uh, I think September's Portland Web Innovators is going to be here uh, with Adam Duvander. Mm -hmm. um, then there's going to be a Python uh, <laughs> Django Roundup. Yeah, there's a code sprint code happening sprint. around DjangoCon that's happening here in town. DjangoCon, excuse me. Um, and then next yeah. week there's something else on Tuesday. So the goal is probably to have some type of event once a week. Um, Whether it be just a meeting space or... Yeah. yeah. We, but, and we definitely want to have... Um, part of the reason that we did the event on uh, last week, um, which was you know to kind of announce it to the world, Rick did a post... Um, it wasn't that like oh my gosh we have this great thing and we know exactly what we're doing. It was more hey there's here's a space and we're gonna we're gonna be throwing some things in it. So we thought hey it's first Thursday let's let's invite people in just to see it and you know hey great so now you know where it is now you know how to get to it um, and you know we look forward to the events we'll be throwing here. <clears throat> we're probably gonna play with something with first Thursdays anyway or continuously. That's nice. Right here down That's with Pearl. Yeah. Um, we all have artist friends. We'd love to create something that they can. Got an awful lot of white walls in here. Yeah, <laughs> windows. Yeah. Um, as well as, you know, we'd love to have a lunch 2.0 at some point. I'd probably have to get them online, but... Jay, yeah, seriously. You know, Jake, you might want to talk to the guys, get it on the calendar. <laughs> Just saying. You can fit some people in here. Yeah. All right, with that, uh, I think it's time to wrap up the show, but are there any parting words that you want to leave with everybody? From the big... From the, fancy, from the big uh, fancy leather, leather chairs. They're nice, aren't they? <coughs> Don't know if I should uh, have bunny ears or a smoking jacket or both. a Edgar Allan Poe book. Yeah. Nice combination of those items. I, I don't have anything else, uh, you know. <laughs> as always, we appreciate you, uh, uh, you know, coming here, even on site. Well, no, thanks for yeah. having us down. It was it was a, a treat to come down here and see the space. I wasn't able to come to the open house. So I was really glad to, to get a look at it. And <laughs> comfy chairs. Jason, anything? Uh, you know, hope to see you on our next event. All right. Everyone, thanks. Say goodnight to everybody.